<sighs> well, that was quite a weekend at the movie theaters. Let's see what's playing on good old video on demand. Wait, what's this? A brand new Stephen King adaptation starring John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson? You know, the last one they were in together was actually pretty good, so who knows? Maybe lightning can strike twice in the same place. Well, only one way to find out. My dear viewers, I must apologize for this rather crude presentation, but you see, due to my viewing of this rather unbelievable and horrendous piece of excrement claiming to be a film, I have somehow lost the majority of my brain cells in just under 90 minutes. Oh yes my friends, I have stumbled upon a film that is even worse than Gods of Egypt, and no more the, wow, the pain, North, combined. It's a movie that has been in production hell for over six years, and it's incredibly obvious as to why. It was produced, at least initially, by Reliant Media, a production company which was responsible for one of my favorite animated films ever made, Tom Hanks's Electric City. Sadly, at some point, they declared bankruptcy and went out of business. This film was then bought, shelved, and sold again by at least four other production companies. Then it was rewritten, reshot, and re-edited, as if it was put in a blender, by an accountant. Now, the film has made its way to Amazon Video on demand for just under $10, which, if you ask me, is a greater ripoff than the annual release of the Madden Football video game series. Despite my rather dangerous and sudden dip in mental health, I could not wait any longer than was necessary to warn all of you of the utter awfulness of this film. Rest assured, I will go see the doctor immediately after this review. Also, in the interest of saving you the inconvenience of looking at my elephant man face, and listening to this rather cool, but somewhat annoying computerized British voice, I will do my best to keep this review as short as possible. So, the story, based upon the book of the same title by Stephen King, who also co-wrote the screenplay, follows an artist played by John Cusack, on his way home, upon arriving at the airport, strange things start happening. Everyone around him starts going insane and begin killing each other. Almost immediately, he discovers the source of the madness. Now, be prepared. This is a really stupid discovery. He discovers that everyone has turned into brainwashed zombies because of their, wait for it, cell phones. Yes, I am not making that up. The whole world turns into brain dead zombies and begin killing each other because of a mysterious signal transmitted to their brains from their cell phones. I get how this is supposed to be a kind of social commentary about how cell phones are suspected of causing brain damage, and how they seem to turn people into mindless zombies, but this is just beyond ridiculous. It just occurred to me how ironic my current situation is. I've been traumatized by a film about cell phones turning people into brain dead zombies. Now I am attempting to review said movie, which has killed lots of my brain cells, using a cell phone to speak on my behalf. Anyway, after escaping the airport, he runs into a tram worker, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Afterwards, John decides to get back to his family on foot, and Samuel decides to join him. From then on, the film degrades into a series of increasingly boring and pointless scenes in which they meet new characters, none of which you care about, sit inside and talk about things that don't add up to anything, or have any relevance in the story, and occasionally have strange visions of a decaying man in a red hoodie, that goes absolutely nowhere. Seriously, it's treated like they're building up to the grand revelation, but it literally gets run over and killed in its tracks. Now, it should come as no surprise to anyone that most Stephen King adaptations have been pretty bad, with a few notable exceptions of course. However, even the really bad ones, like Kujo, or Children of the Corn, are still somewhat entertaining, because they are of the so bad it's good variety. They are bad and that, funny, 
kind of way. Also, at least on a technical level, they were competently made with decent cinematography, comprehensive editing, and audible sound design. This film doesn't have any of that. Everything about it just reeks of incompetence and amateurish execution. The cinematography is shaky, underlit, and lacks any kind of creative flair. The editing has no rhyme or reason. It falls into the same trap as films like Terminator Genesis, where they just cut to 8 different shots within a single sequence for no reason. But the absolute worst thing, in terms of the technicals, is the sound design. When it's not assaulting your ears with the high-pitched screeching sound that the zombies make, it suddenly just disappears entirely, especially during, quote, important scenes, unquote. But the absolute worst thing about this movie, aside from the repetitive dialogue, bad acting on all fronts, except for Jackson, and the really bad direction, is the film's ending. All three of them. Yes, this film has three different endings, none of which make any sense and only serve to insult you for wasting your time watching this crap. It's especially insulting when you consider that the ending of the book, while still not very good, was at least more creative than what the film adaptation gave us, and the adaptation was co-written by the author. This is just the worst kind of bad movie, it stinks of incompetence, apathy, and lacks any kind of funny moments that would have otherwise made it tolerable, at the very least. The producers did not have the gall to put this film in theaters. If you're looking through new releases on Amazon Video On Demand, stay away from this film, both for your own good, and for the good of cinema in general. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the norm. Thank you all for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to see the doctor. Mom! Call the brain surgeon!